Hello everyone. Welcome back to the series of lectures in hepatology. Today we will be learning about a very important inherited disorder of the liver which is your Wilson's disease. So let's begin. So what is Wilson's disease, right? So Wilson's disease is basically an inherited disorder of the liver, right? So this is an inherited disorder of the liver, okay? So what is the problem here? So there is a problem with the metabolism of copper. So over the course of time, because there is a problem with the metabolism of copper, it finally leads to a chronic liver disease, right? It results in a chronic liver disease. But the problem here is that the Wilson's disease does not affect only the liver. So it is wrong to understand that the Wilson's disease affects only the liver. This is a multi-system disorder. This is a multi-system inherited disorder where there is a problem in the metabolism of copper finally resulting in a form of chronic liver disease. Alright? Okay. So which gene is affected? So which gene is affected? It is your ATP7 gene, ATP7B gene, right? Okay, where have you heard this ATP7A? There is another gene which is ATP7A. This is associated with Menke's kinky hair disease. Menke's kinky hair disease. You have to remember here that this is a defect or problem with the ATP7B gene. Okay. So, how is this gene defect obtained? This is inherited in an autosomal recessive patch. So, how is this gene defect obtained? This is inherited in an autosomal re recessive pattern. So, this is inherited in an autosomal recessive pattern where there is a deficiency or problem with the ATP7 gene. Okay. What is the function of this ATP7 gene? To understand this, let us understand the copper metabolism a bit. So basically the copper which is found in an unbound form binds with a protein which is called as aposeruloplasmin. Okay, the copper which is found in an unbound form binds with a protein which is called as aposeruloplasmin. Now this copper with aposeruloplasmin is called as holoceruloplasmin and this happens in the liver. So copper is transported from the liver to the intestine for its functions. So, this is brought about by copper binding to aposeruloplasmin to form holoceruloplasmin and this holoceruloplasmin is excreted in the bile and this is how there is removal of copper from the liver. There is removal of copper from the liver and this is brought about by this ATP7B gene. Now, if the product of ATP7B gene is not acting, what will happen? Copper cannot be removed from the liver. So, if this is absent, then this results in accumulation of copper in the liver. So, there is accumulation of copper, not only in the liver, predominantly in the liver currently because we are discussing hepatology, but copper can be deposited in other organs as well. It can be deposited in the brain, it can affect the kidneys and so on. So, basically the clearance of copper is affected and there can be a lot of free copper accumulation. Okay, so the Clearance of copper is affected. Alright. So, what have we understood till now? Wilson's disease is a multi system disorder and it is an inherited disorder which is inherited in an autosomal recessive fashion and there is a problem or defect in the metabolism of copper and finally there is accumulation of copper and results in a chronic liver disease. Okay. And which gene is affected? It is your ATP7B gene. So, there is no formation of holoceruloplasmin, there is no removal of copper in the bile. Okay? So, what are the phenotypes of Wilson's disease? So, Wilson's disease can basically present in different different forms. So, what are the highlighting clinical features or the phenotypes of Wilson's disease? The most important is your hepatic form. In this hepatic form, as the name suggests, there will be involvement of the liver. So, this results in a chronic liver disease which usually occurs in the young individuals. So, any young individual less than 40 years of age presenting with chronic liver disease and you have not found the cause, please do evaluate for Wilson's disease. So, CLD in a young individual. Then, neurologic manifestations. What are the neurologic manifestations of Wilson's disease? So, the main problem is that there is copper deposition in the basal ganglia. There is copper deposition in the basal ganglia. 
Now, if the basal ganglia is affected, what is the basal ganglia involved in? It is basically involved in movement, right? So, it is basically involved in movement. So, whenever there is copper deposition in the basal ganglia, you will have a wide array of movement disorders, okay? So, there can be dysarthria, which is difficulty in articulation of speech. There is dysarthria or difficulty in articulation of speech. You can have dystonia, you can have rigidity, you can have tremors. Okay. The classical tremor which is seen in Wilson's disease is what we call as the wing beating tremors. Okay. This is what we call as the wing beating tremors. So, tremors like this. Right? So, how do you identify or how do you examine for wing beating tremors? You ask your patient to keep your hands like this and then they cannot keep this posture and there is a wing beating tremor. Then, let us look at the ophthalmologic manifestations of Wilson's disease. So, in the eye, first we will look at the cornea. There can be deposition of copper in the decimants membrane of the cornea. There can be deposition of the copper in the decimants membrane of the cornea and this is what results in this ring-like appearance around the limbus of the cornea which is called as your KF ring or your Kaiser Fleschner ring. Okay, so this is your KF ring. Now, where does the KF ring get deposited? One, it is deposited in the decimant membrane of the cornea or the decimant layer of the cornea. Two, where does it commonly begin? Right, so when you examine for the KF ring, where does it commonly begin? It begins in the superior and the inferior poles in the limbus of the cornea. Okay, three, what is its significance? Up to 65% of the individuals who have a KF ring, it is associated with neurologic, neurologic Wilson's disease. Right? So, if the KF ring is present, there is a higher probability of neurologic Wilson's disease. But, it does not mean that there is 100% involvement. There are patients who have KF ring who do not have any neurologic symptoms. What are the other situations where KF ring can be found. KF ring is not specific for Wilson's disease. Though this is pathognomic, if KF ring is found, we do think of Wilson's disease, but it is not specific. Okay, so the, it is pathognomic, but not specific. It can be found in other cholestatic diseases as well. So, it can be found in other cholestatic diseases as well. Alright, so that is about the KF ring for you. The second clinical important eye manifestation is your cataract where there can be opacification of the lens. What type of cataract? It is called as the sunflower cataract. Okay, this is called as the sunflower cataract. Okay, then what are the psychiatric manifestations? The third most important phenotype, very very important is that there are certain neuropsychiatric manifestations. So, you can have restlessness, you can have agitation, you can have irritability. In severe cases, they become very quiet and apathetic, but you can have these changes in your initial stages. Okay? Next, endocrine manifestations. This is associated with hypogonadism. Wilson's disease is associated with hypogonadism. So, what all have we learned? What are all the phenotypes? We have learned about the hepatic phenotypes, neurologic manifestations of Wilson's, then we have seen the ophthalmologic manifestations, neuropsychiatric manifestations and the endocrine manifestations of Wilson's. Now, let us look at the renal manifestations. Now, let us look at the renal manifestations. Wilson's disease basically is associated with your type 2 or proximal RTA. Proximal renal tubular acidosis. Proximal or your type 2 renal tubular acidosis. Okay. So, we have learnt in our chapter on RTA about the two types, type 1 and type 2. In your type 2, there is involvement of the PCT. Right. So, there is involvement of the PCT, which is your proximal convoluted tubules. Right. So, this is involved. So, what are the features of proximal RTA? You can have metabolic acidosis. You can have hypokalemia. 
then there is a disruption in your glucose and amino acid transport as well so you have glucose urea and amino acid urea right so you have glucose urea amino acid urea metabolic acidosis with hypokalemia so these are the features of proximal or type 2 rta then bone what happens is that whenever you have a long term severe metabolic acidosis there can be bone resorption and hence there is a predisposition to osteoporosis and rickets in the blood copper is toxic to the rbcs and you can have a hemolytic anemia you can have a hemolytic anemia so these are about the clinical features hepatic neurologic psychiatric endocrine renal involvement blood bone involvement okay so this is about your clinical features of wilson's disease now how do you diagnose wilson's disease we have understood what is the basic pathogenesis what is the gene defect in wilson's so how do you diagnose right so how do you diagnose what happens to the serum copper so what happens to the serum copper so the serum copper that we measure is usually the copper that is bind to ceruloplasmin right so the copper serum copper that we measure is basically the copper that is bound to ceruloplasmin about 20% of which is bound to albumin right so in wilson's disease what is the defect the defect is in your atp 7b where copper plus ceruloplasmin binding itself is not there right so this itself is affected and there is defect in the removal of copper and hence copper is accumulated in the liver so the serum copper is reduced because what we measure is that which is bound to ceruloplasmin so that cannot be found serum copper is reduced and similarly your serum ceruloplasmin levels are also reduced because the binding itself is not happening however the urinary copper excretion is more than 100 micrograms in 24 hours so serum copper is reduced serum ceruloplasmin is reduced urinary copper excretion is high then you can also detect the tissue copper tissue copper is your liver in the liver copper more than 200 micrograms per gram is diagnostic of wilson's disease right so tissue copper more than 200 micrograms per gram is diagnostic of wilson's disease so the most important diagnostic test is serum copper and ceruloplasmin is low whereas the urinary copper excretion is elevated and tissue copper is also elevated okay fine now let us understand the treatment of wilson's disease so there are two ways in which you can treat one is the use of copper chelation therapy copper chelation therapy right copper chelation therapy to or uh, to absorb the excess of unbound copper so what is the first drug that was used the first drug is your d pencil amine so this d pencil amine basically binds to copper and it helps in the chelation of copper and it also increases the urinary excretion of copper it also increases the urinary excretion of copper okay so what we give first line drug is your d pencil amine but it has certain side effects including a hematologic side effects the characteristic skin rash that we see with wilson's disease is your elastosis perforans serpentosa okay elastosis perforans serpentosa right so this is a characteristic skin rash which is basically seen in your trunk and axillae which is associated with d pen use then d pencil amine in some proportion of individuals when you give with patients with neurological involvement right so d pencil amine when you administer to some proportion of patients with neurologic involvement they can be paradoxic worsening of the neurologic symptoms they can be paradoxic worsening of the neurologic symptoms so you have to be very very careful in that this does not mean that penicillin is contraindicated but always watch out for the worsening of the symptoms so in such cases another copper chelator that you can use is your trientine okay is your trientine a third newer drug which is being used is your tetrathiomolybdate or your tm so this decreases your copper absorption as well and it acts as a chelator as well so it has dual action it helps in chelation and it decreases the copper absorption so it has been recently approved for the management of wilson's disease then the fourth drug which is commonly used is zinc the mechanism of action of zinc is that it decreases copper absorption 
it decreases copper absorption okay and the advantage of zinc is that this can be used in pregnancy this can be used in pregnancy the problem with d pen is that this has teratogenic side effects so pregnancy zinc is the preferred drug okay so this brings us to the end of our chapter on wilson's disease we have understood the genetic defect the pathogenesis clinical features phenotypes diagnosis and management thank you